good afternoon everyone uh, thank you ma'am for introducing me and uh, we'll be uh, i'll be taking you through what are the actual differences in the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics in children and this will be followed by what are the common organisms and what antibiotics we should start with or begin with and this uh, this will be also provided to you in a print form i have shared my ppt so that the print can be taken or the ppt also can be shared for the com Ah, okay. So, so uh, as we know that the antibiotics are the most frequently prescribed uh, uh, drugs uh, in any chart. If you see that, you will invariably see antibiotics. Uh, even though it is more prescribed, even in pediatric population, there are only few studies which are few drugs which are actually studied in the pediatric population. most antibiotic microbials are given based on the studies which are done in adults uh, uh, in children which uh, um, most antibacterials in children is given on the studies which are based in adults and they have been more or less found safe but we know that children are not small adults and there are unique peculiarities of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and because the doses dosages vary according to the age as well as according to the weight of the baby they are more prone for uh, errors uh, both during the dosage calculation as well as during dilution and administration as well so what are the main issues in children and uh, small babies uh, we know that the age and growth and development affect the pharmacokinetic processes that is absorption distribution metabolism and elimination dosages are frequently based on weight and or body surface area and there are certain drugs which cause increased toxicity like ceftriaxone and fluoroquinolones in small children and there are differences in organ function and disease states so uh, we'll be just seeing uh, briefly seeing how it is affected so the first thing is the absorption so it depends on many factors like gastric acid secretion the bile salt pool uh, gastric emptying time motility intestinal motility surface area bacterial colonization and the presence and extent of the underlying disease all these factors are reduced or not very well developed in newborns and in children according to age this is variably affected like for example in uh, when in the presence of decreased gastric acid secretion the bioavailability of acid labile drugs like penicillins are more however the bioavailability of weakly acidic drugs will further reduce similarly if we have a decreased size of bile salt pools the bioavailability of lipophilic drugs will also decrease Uh, due to decreased or uh, less uh, gastric emptying time and intestinal motility in children there will be more time required to reach the therapeutic drug concentration and also this will hamper the absorption because of decreased surface area available for absorption like for example in the congenital atherotic bowel or a surgically removed bowel these can lead to specific absorptive defects coming to the volume of distribution it varies with age there are changes in total body water or relative size or weight of the organ and also it is dependent upon the plasma protein binding membrane permeability local blood flow and other hemodynamic factors so uh, this is a chart just depicting the percentage of water in the body according to the age so we, as we can see uh, most of the uh, most of the total body water uh, uh, most of the premature full term uh, less than 1 kilo babies have almost the 60 to 80% of lesser the age group more is the total body body content water content so this factor has to be taken into consideration because we know that uh, we will require higher dose of water soluble antimicrobials at a younger age as compared to the older persons so uh, further there are th three plasma uh, proteins which are principally affecting the plasma protein binding of the drugs uh, namely the albumin alpha 1 acid glycoprotein and the lipoprotein so these concentration are lower in uh, lower in infants and it reaches the adult value by around 1 year of age and the basic drugs uh, are binding all the three drugs while the neutral and acidic bind only to the albumin this is important specifically in the newborn period uh, because we know that there are some endogenous factor which compete for the protein binding site and this can displace the free bilirubin uh, levels in the newborn for example these drugs like ceftriaxone cefepirazone or sulfonamide they will uh, compete for the protein binding uh, binding uh, sites on the on these proteins and therefore uh, the percentage of free bilirubin will be more so in this ba the babies who are receiving these uh, drugs there can be problem of hyperbilirubinemia and that could be detrimental to the baby 
so uh, the next process is the metabolism it is slower in neonates than in older infants and children and liver is the principal organ for the metabolism there are two types of reaction for the biotransformation the phase 1 oxidation reduction hydrolysis which are the functional transformation and followed by the elimination of the drug uh, uh, and excretion uh, is mainly the phase 2 by hydroxylation and conjugation with the sulfonamide sulfite and the glucuronide and these requires enzymes and enzymes mature at variable time of development so the phase 1 activity is reduced in neonates and it rise, uh, rapidly rises in the first 6 months of life and then it, it exceeds the adult rates for first few years then again it slows down during the adolescence and reaches the adult rate at the late puberty for the phase 2 cell phation is well developed in infants but glu glucuronidation is underdeveloped excretion occurs primarily through the kidney and bile and it again depends upon the plasma protein binding the renal blood flow the glomerular filtration rate and the tubular secretion all these factors are developing in the first 2 years of life so it is very important to know what is the renal blood flow and the gfr in these age groups so we know that the renal blood flow is low at birth like around 12 ml per minute and it reaches the adult level by 1 year of age similarly for the gfr it is around 2 to 4 ml per minute at the birth and it uh, it uh, increases to 8 to 20 by 2 to 3 days and reaches the adult level of 120 ml per minute by 3 to 5 months of the age so the drug dosages of antimicrovials will be based on the age and the body weight of the patient of the baby or the child and it is a practical approach but uh, it's not the ideal ideally we should measure the plasma drug concentration if uh, whenever feasible uh, mainly because of maturational differences in what we have seen uh, previously the absorption distribution metabolism and elimination uh, however we plasma drug concentration is not always feasible so the practical approach is uh, still with what we follow so other considerations are uh, you should look uh, for the specific drug adverse effect like tetracyclines are contraindicated uh, in less than 10 years of age because of association with teeth abnormalities and bone uh, problems then fluoroquinolones uh, are associated with cartilage abnormalities in young animal models uh, the decrease uh, there can be some decrease uh, toxicity like decrease anaphylactic reaction to penicillin and cholestatic jaundice by erythromycin mainly because we know that the uh, immune system is not very much mature so they might not, might not react uh, uh, and the anaphylactic reactions may be less uh, with penicillin in children so uh, the intramuscular sites uh, for absorption for injection is again there is erratic absorption and unpredictable especially in very small infants and neonates this is mainly because of reduced muscle mass there is a poor perfusion to various muscles and peripheral vasomotor instability and insufficient muscle contraction so there can be we cannot just rely on intramus intramuscular injections even in children Uh, something about percutaneous absorption uh, mostly we can uh, if we prescribe like topical antibacterial or antifungals uh, there can be increased absorption in neonates and young infants because they have underdeveloped epidermal barrier like the the stratum corneum is very thin and there there is a lot of water content also so all of these will lead to increase can lead to increased systemic absorption of these drugs and also there is increased ratio of body surface area to total body water which is three times higher in neonates than adults so if we uh, certain topical antibacterial is not uh, to be used in very small babies even the, for procedures like uh, we use betadine uh, if we use betadine in very small babies uh, may, you may not be dealing with neonates but in specifically in the neonates and premature babies we usually do not use this because even uh, for surface cleaning if we use this there is a absorption uh, uh, and systemic absorption of these drugs then uh, then coming to the certain drug interaction so we know that the cytochrome p450 enzyme and cytochrome 3a4 inhibitors uh, these they can be uh, drug, various drug interactions with these enzymes and inhibitors so uh, uh, the, the classical examples are the erythromycin and fluconazole when given with cisab right there can be toxic effects the erythromycin and theophylline is not to be combined then chloramphenicol and phenytoin is not to be combined Uh, a word about pharmacodynamics it uh, pharmacodynamics affects the it affects activity and toxic uh, toxicity of drugs within the body is studied uh, is what is called as pharmacodynamics so uh, it is there are two types i think this part has been covered uh, probably in the first day 
the time dependent killing and the concentration dependent killing so it is the same uh, for children as well so we have this uh, drugs like penicillin cephalosporin and vancomycin which is mainly the time uh, time dependent killing the concentration dependent is aminoglycoside and fluoroquinolones so this is just a chart to show what are the common organisms uh, encountered in the uh, pediatric age group and what is the first line antibiotic that we should start all these are community acquired we are not talking just about hospital acquired infection these are all community acquired so maybe uh, like you will get uh, this but just to mention like for case of acute uh, otitis media or tonsillitis uh, this is most commonly seen in opd practice like pharyngitis and tonsillitis where, where the common organism is group a streptococcus h flu followed by uh, and menisaria meningitis so again the first line drug is penicillin v or amoxicillin or benzathin penicillin g if there is an allergy we can consider giving azithromycin or erythromycin for urinary tract infection e coli klebsiella and proteus are the common so we give ceftriaxone third, third generation cephalosporin and amylglycoside so for the community acquired pneumonia again the organism varies depending upon your age group but the most commonly penicillin and cephalosporins are the used Uh, again for the meningitis third generation cephalosporin uh, or the uh, penicillin g plus genta or the third generation uh, cephalosporin in the older age group so these are again the charts so you will be getting uh, this uh, ppt for a ready reference if you encounter any pediatric patient in your population <laughs> 